Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 36 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. In part 35, I was explaining chromatography to you and I told you that there are two categories of chromatography. One is adsorption chromatography and the second is partition chromatography. And we were studying adsorption chromatography and I told you in adsorption chromatography, you further have two types. The first is the column chromatography and the second is thin layer chromatography. So in part 35, I told you about column chromatography. In this video, we are going to discuss thin layer chromatography. So what is thin layer chromatography? Thin layer chromatography is also known as TLC, thin layer chromatography. So that is, it is abbreviated as TLC. You know, I explained to you when I was explaining chromatography that if you take, uh, uh, let us say, a little ink, let, let us say that I have this, uh, you know, paper, it is the paper towel. And if I put a dot of ink on this, and I insert it in a, uh, in a solvent. For example, this is the solvent that is water that I have. And if I dip it in it, the ink would get absorbed on the paper. We usually in the laboratory, we use chromatographic paper. And uh, a paper towel is not the appropriate, is not the right uh, stationary state really. Yet since at home I have no other alternative, this is how I would display it to you and you dip it in a solvent, we observe that the solvent, which is acting as the eluent here, moves along the paper. And as it moves along the paper, it dissolves the ink in it and the ink starts moving along with the solvent that is water. Do you see the ink is moving up? As the ink keeps moving up, it keeps rising along with the solvent and a state will come where the solvent now, you can see the ink has reached, is moving along with the solvent. And if I keep this in the solvent for some time, I realize that the solvent, I wait till the ink no longer rises and the solvent goes beyond the, that point where the ink reaches. So I keep holding on to it till the solvent goes beyond the ink. Right now, the solvent and the ink are traveling together. So a state comes where the solvent moves further ahead, but the ink, since it gets absorbed on the, uh, on the paper, the chromatographic paper, it stops. Be once it got totally absorbed, absorbed, it cannot move further. Therefore, it stops moving and only the solvent goes ahead from here. So this is basically how uh, paper chromatography is done, which I'll be explaining actually in the next video. But right now, what I want to tell you is it is the same technique. The paper here is the stationary phase. The solvent is the and the ink, that is the substance whose components have to be sub, uh, sub, um, separated. That is the mobile phase. In thin layer chromatography, we carry out the same process. This that we obtain here. Now, do you see that the solvent now is going beyond the uh, ink? You can't, since it is water, you can't see it, but the solvent, it is wet till here, while the ink has stopped right here. So now, the it has been absorbed. I wonder if you can really see that the water, it is wet till here, but the ink has stopped here. So it has got absorbed over the uh, paper. So in thin layer chromatography, the stationary state, as uh, you see, is not a paper. You take a glass, like a glass slide, uh, that you use in the biology uh, laboratory and on that thin layer of glass, on that glass slide, you apply a thin layer of the stationary state and the stationary state is an adsorbent, something like silica gel or um, what, uh, alumina. So you would, you would use a paper, uh, glass slide and on the glass side slide you will have a very thin layer of the adsorbent. So you are using a liquid or a semi-solid adsorbent which is stuck to the glass plate and which kind of acts like a paper because you, it is a very thin layer about 0.2 uh, millimeter of 
uh, is the thickness of that layer. So it is almost like having a paper of silica gel or um, of alumina, which is the stationary state. So, but the process of uh, chromatography is the same that you have a mixture of components I had only blue ink here so I put a dot of only blue ink if I had red ink also then the red and blue inks would have absorbed to different levels therefore they would have one of the components came up to here the other would have gone up to another point so in thin layer like I took one uh, example here where I had a you know a highlighter that I used with a blue ink which was yellow in color can you see this the yellow color you can see is separate from the blue it has been separated due to the chromatography but it is not very clear not the best example therefore uh, since this is not chromatographic paper but in TLC when you carry out this process in TLC what do we see that the spot the sample which you have which the components of whose have to be separated is dipped in a solution and the layer of the stationary state or the uh, of the substance that is um, silica gel or alumina is on the glass and the glass is dipped in a jar containing the solvent or the eluent and the eluent then rises up and the dot moves on of the uh, of the compound of the mixture that you have put in it moves on and the different components they will form dots at different distances each component will get separated so let us read what thin layer chromatography is it is a type of adsorption chromatography which involves the separation over a thin layer of an adsorbent coated on a glass plate so you are separating the uh, components of a mixture over a thin layer of adsorbent the components will get adsorbed over the uh, adsorb uh, over the adsorbent but the adsorbent is only a thin layer over a glass plate it's uh, <coughs> adsorbent coated on a glass plate a thin layer of about 0.2 millimeter or about 0.2 millimeter thick of an adsorbent like silica gel or alumina is spread on a glass plate. You take a glass plate, you kind of slather it just like you slather butter over a toast. You slather the silica gel or alumina over the glass plate and make a thin, you know, thin coating of it. And then maybe you use another glass plate to kind of rub it and make it make the surface even. And now now you allow it to stay for some time so that it stabilizes and then you place it in the in the solvent in a jar containing the solvent and on this uh, plate you put a dot of the sample that has to be separated so or a silica gel or alumina is spread on a glass plate of a suitable size and this is known as thin layer chromatography plate the plate is known as the thin layer chromatography plate or it is also known as the chroma plate the solution of the mixture is applied as a small dot about two centimeters above the the solution is applied as a small dot about two centimeters above the uh, base line the baseline is two centimeter above the one end of the TLC plate which is then placed in a jar of the eluent. Now that place, that line where the where you have dipped the plate, that line where it touches the solvent, that is known as the baseline. And the water has risen now up to, this is wet till here now. So the water, this distance of the solvent traveling from here till here is measured that the solvent traveled this much distance and the dot has only reached till here. This is not perfect because this is not a chromatographic paper. This is a paper towel. It, otherwise, if you used a chromatographic paper, you would have actually noticed the dot moving up. And of course, you do see a trail of it also. But then you measure the maximum distance to which it travels. So the dot, what distance it reaches, that will be X. And the distance that the solvent traveled from the baseline, that is the line where it was dipped into the solvent from that line to, and you actually draw a line with a pencil and then dip it in uh, water or whatever the solvent is so that you know you're not going under it. You just keep it at the line and that is your baseline. So you measure the distance of the solvent that, it, that traveled from the baseline and the distance that the 
um, that the sample traveled. So the distance the sample traveled would be x and the distance the solvent traveled from the baseline would be y. And on the basis of this, we would be able to calculate the retardation factor or the RF value. Retardation is that as the substance keeps getting adsorbed, it stops, its movement is retarded, it stops. So it is known as the retardation factor. So the element separates the compounds based on their degree of adsorption. As you see, in, the, in this case, the blue ink did not travel as much as the yellow ink. The yellow ink seems to have, be traveling more. So you will calculate the retardation factors of both the inks. The blue has reached only up to here and the yellow has reached up to here and the solvent has gone up to this point. So you will Calculate it from the baseline and you will calculate the retardation factor for both the uh, components that is yellow ink and blue ink. So the relative adsorption of each component is expressed as its retardation factor that is the RF value and the RF value will tell you uh, will tell you how adsorbent is the component. So how do you calculate RF value? The distance moved by the substance from the baseline, that is the whether it was yellow ink or blue ink, whatever component you are taking, divided by the distance moved by the solvent from the baseline. The solvent always moves a greater distance. And the substance, that is the component, it always moves a lesser distance. Because that is why it got adsorbed and it stopped while the solvent kept moving up. Sometimes, you know, we usually see different colors like we saw in yellow ink and blue ink and we, uh, even I tried it with the soy sauce. It's a very, you know, this was, <laughs> it kind of moved up to the top along with it. So it really is not very adsorbent. So it kind of, you can see the trail, a yellow trail of the soy sauce. It went right up to the top. So I don't know if even if it got adsorbed, it kind of moved on with the solvent. Anyway, sometimes you can see the spots due to their color or due to the difference in their colors. But there are times when you have components which are being separated by chromatography, but they are not colored. You cannot see their colors with a naked eye, but under an ultraviolet light, if it is a fluorescent compound, then under an ultraviolet light, it starts glowing. So in that case, you have to put it under ultraviolet light and then it will glow and then you will calculate the value of X in that case. So the spots of colorless compounds which are invisible to the eye but they are fluorescent, they fluoresce, they can be detected by putting the plate under an ultraviolet light. Sometimes even an ultraviolet light is not possible so what you do? Another detection technique is to place the plate in a covered jar containing crystals of iodine. You know those compounds which are colorless but which may react with iodine and iodine tends to impart a brown color to the substance that it reacts with. So if it adsorbs or not reacts, if it adsorbs on it, iodine is brown in color. So if that substance adsorbs, that compound adsorbs iodine, then it will turn brown in color. And you will be able to tell, okay, it was invisible to us, but when I put it in the uh, in a jar containing iodine crystals, the iodine vapors will turn it, will get adsorbed on it, and it, that spot will turn brown. And then you can calculate the value of X. Sometimes, you know, you it, the substance is neither fluorescent, nor is it colored, nor is it reacting with iodine, then how do you identify? You've still used chromatography. So sometimes an appropriate compound, like an appropriate compound, you say, uh, even in the case of iodine, we chose an appropriate element which would react with it and then that would reveal itself by turning brown in color. So sometimes we use, we know what the comp components are and we want to detect its presence. So we already know that the impurity in this particular thing is usually that compound and that compound is colorless, but it reacts with this compound and gives a certain color. So I will take the chromatogram, I'll take a spray bottle and I spray a little bit of that compound, which would react with the component and give a certain color. 
So sometimes an appropriate compound may be sprayed on the plate. For example, amino acids can be detected by spraying the plate with ninhydrin solution. If you have amino acids and you can't detect the amino acids, they can be detected by you take the chromatogram, spray a little ninhydrin solution on it and you will see the color uh, appear. And that is how you would be able to identify it. So this was thin layer chromatography. And with this, I'll wind up today's, today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.